The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So A-Rod, or Alex Rodriguez, is one of the most talented baseball players to ever hold a bat. When he was young, people thought there was no ceiling to his abilities. And just this past week, he me reached that milestone that, uh, that is sort of automatic entry into the Hall of Fame. He is one of a handful uh, of folks that have over 3,000 hits in his career. But his career has also been stained by uh, steroid abuse, uh, injuries, and a year-long suspension. Uh, and the headline uh, that I came across read this, and it stuck with me. It said, A-Rod, we couldn't believe in you because you couldn't believe in yourself. We couldn't get behind you and believe in you because you couldn't believe in yourself. Despite being as talented as almost anybody that ever held a bat, experiencing tremendous, tremendous acclaim and results, it wasn't enough. He didn't believe in himself. And I think that's what Jesus is absolutely passionately concerned about, is that the disciples do not believe in themselves. They're capable of incredible things. Jesus knows this. He knows they were made for incredible things. They can move mountains. They just realize that God is inside of them. If they just wake up to the reality that God has prepared them for this day, that they are instruments of God's grace and God's goodness, and that there will be a day where Jesus isn't asleep in the back of the boat, and they'll need to stand on their own two feet and be Christ's hands and feet and heart and body in the world. And he's beginning to worry that they won't claim that identity that they won't realize how fully God believes in them. And I think that's one of the big juxtapositions between the two readings that we have today. The reading of David and Goliath and the reading of, of Jesus with his disciples in the boat. David, that ruddy, skinny young boy who wasn't even brought forward when they were picking a king of Jesse's sons, realizes that he has a responsibility and that he has gifts that God has given him. He realizes that his people are, in, are, are being threatened, they're in danger, and he realizes that God has always been with him, that every time he has stood tall and tried to protect his flock, God has been with him. Whether it be bear, whether it be lion, every time anybody has invaded, he has channeled the power of God awake inside of him and he's protected his flock. And despite going up against a giant who's nine foot nine, wearing 125 pounds of, 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 of metal meal, a spear weighing even more than that, he 
He's not overwhelmed because he has seen that through him, God can do incredible things. So he stands up and he volunteers and he saves his people. Meanwhile, in the boat, in the gospel for today, we have the disciples who uh, generally any time they've been asked to go to other lands, asked to leave their comfort zone, to travel to, to faraway people, they tend to cower in fear or walk dis at quite a distance behind Jesus when Jesus can't be dissuaded. And Jesus says, this time we've got to go across the Sea of Galilee, which is a body of water that's known to be pretty dangerous. Uh, fishing around the shore seems to be pretty safe, but crossing all the way across, not only are you going to, uh, to people that you don't know, to a context that you don't understand, but you're crossing a pretty dangerous body of water. Uh, and storms would rise up very quickly. We hear that there's other boats around, uh, but the storm can rise up at any moment. And so they go across, and Jesus is asleep in the, in, in, in the back, and a, a scholar that's, uh, that, that, that's been to that area uh, describes the boat as even on a still day, only having about a 12 to 18 inch clearance from water lapping in on the side. So you can only imagine when this tremendous storm comes up. And these disciples who didn't really want to go anyway are watching as the boat's getting tossed back and forth as it's getting filled with water. And the person that made them go is asleep in the back. And so I think they make the kind of declaration of faith that I would make. God, why did you bring me to this moment? God, why aren't you helping me? Where are you? God, you asked me to do this, and now I'm here, and I'm sinking. And it's a storm all around, and there's chaos. Where are you? i got to think that's a declaration of faith. But Jesus wakes up, and he calms the water, and then he says to them, Ye of little faith, where is your faith? What's that all about? I think it's the fact that God wants us to realize that God is awake in us. That not just that we, that we tiptoe over to the side and let God go and take care of it all. Especially as we look at a world that is filled with chaos and disorder and the need for God's hands and feet, God's instruments in the world. God needs us. Bless you. And God needs us to realize that God works in us. That God is awake in us. That God believes in us. This is the third time in the gospel that Jesus does this. After they uh, climb the mountain at, at the scene of the transfiguration, as they come down the mountain and they run into uh, the man who is possessed by demons, and they all get behind and say, Jesus, take care of this. Look at this poor man. He's possessed. Jesus says, you all can do this. You all have the power of God within you. You need to believe the way I believe in you. Feeding the 5,000. They come to Jesus and they say, these people are starving. They've got no food to eat. What are we going to do, Jesus? What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Jesus says, feed them. You can do this. Just like Jesus asleep in the boat. You all can do this. You can cross places of, of discomfort. You can reach out farther than you thought possible. You can calm stormy waters. You can be my instruments. There's a comic strip, a BC. Have you ever read the BC comic? The two cavemen usually reflecting on life. Uh, pretty timeless, even though it's supposed to take place thousands of years ago. So the two men are on their backs, looking up at the stars, taking in the wonder of the whole universe. Uh, and uh, one says to the other, I've always wanted to ask God why with such a wonderful world and such an incredible creation, do all of these bad and horrible things seem to keep happening? So the other caveman says to him, well, then why didn't you just ask him? Why don't you ask him? And then the first caveman again starts to think about it and responds. He says, I think it's because I'm worried that God's going to ask me the very same question. That God's going to ask me the very same question. Why do these things happen? Why do we let them happen? Why do we not believe in ourselves and the power of God awake in us? This week, as many of you, uh, I've been struck by what happened in South Carolina. Largely because it's just horrific that somebody could do that 
to a, a group of people, that somebody could have that kind of hate in their heart, uh, could be that separated from their brothers and sisters. Uh, but in part because I have gone down with teenagers from this parish and sat in pews where we were welcomed. Where we were welcomed despite being a different color and from a, a different culture than everybody else in the church. And we were welcomed with open arms. And to see that same kind of welcome extended to this young man and have it betrayed. To sat with me because I think what we do when we go down there is what we're called to do. To go across chaotic waters, to go up across places to somewhere very different. To work hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, to learn about a different community, to worship in a different context. To celebrate the sameness despite our differences. To break bread together and realize that Christ pulls us all together. To realize our capacity to make a difference in someone else's lives. To be able to go down and, and build a house. To, uh, to bring hope. To, to learn and, and expand the kingdom of God in a place far from here. To leave the comfort of Fauquier County to go to a place where we are the outsider. But it's not without anxiety. Especially this year. It's not without parents, I'm sure, with, with, with enhanced amounts of fear uh, as we go uh, amidst a place that's struggling with, with, with more than one incident, incidence of, of racism. But I think that's what we're called to. As we baptize today, we claim that God believes in us. That God doesn't just believe in us. God made us to do God's work. God made us especially for God's purposes. To seek and serve Christ in all people. To respect the dignity of every human being. To seek justice and peace. To get in that boat. So today we celebrate that God believes in us. That God made us in the image of God. That God fills us with God's presence. And I hope as we experience baptism today, as we reaffirm our own baptismal covenant, we wake up. And in waking up, we wake the God inside of us up to be daring, to stand in the face of giants, and to be kingdom builders here in our time. Amen. Amen.